and welcome to another live demonstration. It's been a couple of weeks before since we've done one, and that is due to filming commitments. We've had the lovely Hazel Sony in the studio making a new DVD, which is out next week, so keep your eyes open. So, welcome back. And today, it's really interesting. It's funny how things all fall into place. Um, firstly, I was inspired by a photograph that my colleague sent me of her sister went to Africa, did a safari, and it's just the wonderful colours and the just the freshness of the colours in the picture. So I wanted to paint it. Um, and so I had it planned for this week sometime. Um, and today I've got a chance to do it. But it also coincides with the WWF World our day, which is tomorrow. So at 8.30 um, p.m., you big organisations like Buckingham Palace, I think Sydney Opera House, Edinburgh Castle, are switching their lights off for an hour. And that hour kind of represents what we need to do for the planet. Now, this isn't going to be about saving the planet, um, that kind of thing, but it just really coincides with the, what the WWF are trying to do. And um, uh, the SAA are working with the SAA throughout the year um, on projects. And this is just one of them that we'd like to highlight. So something you can do yourself, you don't have to turn your lights off for an hour at that time, maybe just not use your iPad. Or I think the most telling thing I heard was having a shower for a, a minute less. Think little things that we could all do. And I think people are just very aware now, and it's great to see the young people, the children, being very aware about our environment. And then thinking about the elephant. The elephant's not actually an endangered species, it's vulnerable. And it's frightening how things can suddenly become endangered very quickly. So we all do our little bit, and tomorrow they're highlighting it and just saying to people, you know, be committed for this hour. You know, the hour makes a small difference, but it just gives you the opportunity to make more hours and more commitment. So that's my little bit of a speech to start the demo on. And let's get on with the painting. So using SAA watercolours, because I'm really familiar with the colours and I love them. And again, trying to work out what colours to do for the demonstration, I ended up doing red, yellow, blue. Um, because for me, I don't like to overcomplicate things. The one thing I did have to think about was which blue would work, which yellow would work, and which red would work. So for me, because of that fabulous colour sky, it's a really bright sky, and I n know that the tropical thalo blue in the SAA is a really bright blue. But it may be too bright, so I wanted to dull it down with a French ultramarine. So blue, the yellows are, I've actually put a lemon yellow on the palette, but I don't think I'll use it, too bright. So this time the yellows I'm using are the raw sienna and the quinacridone gold. Now the only reason I'm using the quinacridone gold is because it granulates. Really, all the pigments float and they separate and I think that gives some really lovely texture. And the reds, permanent rose is a really great primary mixing colour. And I'm using burnt sienna as a red. Okay, technically it's a brown, but it gives me that warm brown reddish colour that I'm looking for. So probably got more colours than I need, um, but it was choosing the right colours. So I had cobalt, I had ultramarine, I had the thalo blue, Prussian blue, just to see which colours worked well and that's what you can do when you've got your own colours at home see which colours work for that painting because it's a wildlife painting and we're talking about the WWF World um, Earth Hour Day Earth Hour sorry I'm using the imitation sable now to be honest these are becoming my favourite brush anyway they as they say, imitate sable. So they're not natural hair, but they have that lovely holding um, 
which you expect from a natural hair. They hold the water, they hold the pigment, they hold their point. So a totally animal friendly product, so no animal products made, and it's made from sustainable wood. It's a standard product for the SAA, but it kind of works to mention that products like this are perfectly suitable and have been thought about when um, making them because of the sustainable wood, the thought about the environment. Okay, right, so I'm going to use this Thalo Tropical Blue. Now this is hugely strong colour, really strong colour. And I'm using a nice big brush because again, when I practiced this first time, I was trying to see which brushes work best for me. I was using too small a brush. And even though I'm fairly proficient and I do it quite often, I still have to kind of learn and discover which is going to work for me. So I'm going to start with the first layer. Bockingford Rough. Two reasons why I'm using the rough. Yes, firstly, because it was the first paper I put my hand on. But also, it will give me some wonderful textures. Even in the sky, I'm not so worried about um, leaving gaps here. It kind of works. What I may do is, this is always very difficult, is create um, cauliflowers because I'm being over keen. Look at that, look at that colour. I'm not allowed to say it, but it's lovely. Apparently I use that word quite often, Gary's pointed out. It's, but a, lo it's a lovely word. It's a lovely it's word, a lovely yeah. Word. But it, it really is a fabulous colour. So just putting colour down. So clouds, I'm looking at the clouds. I'm looking, you see I've used the shape and I will alter it as I go along. Right, this is such a strong colour, I'm being very careful to dilute. It's a lovely colour. It's, now. yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why I'm worried about creating cauliflowers is because I'm getting a wetter brush and pushing it into the a drying pigment. I know I can keep going over and keep correcting. See there, I'm creating a line. But if I go back into it, I should be able to fix it. Right, I'm going to stop fiddling with that and just move the clouds there. So while they're drying, I can continue to move them. I quite like that sharp edge. I didn't think I would on that side, but what I'm going to do, it's a damp brush. I'm just going to soften the edges. But because it's a strong colour, it can bleed into. Another great thing, what I have to do if I'm doing this is do it very quickly because this is a very staining colour. See how I can soften the edges. Just slightly soften. It's not softening as well as I want, so let's go into a smaller brush. Just again, see what works. The, the bigger brush was too soft, too soft to be able to just push the pigment in the paper and you'll see it's fixed itself a little bit too much. That's a problem. It worked better before. You can see here it's still wet. I'm able to move it a little bit. Okay. But again, I know it's a staining colour, so it's something I'm not overly surprised about. So I'm not able to move it too much. Okay, let's leave it. Going to go in with a little bit of the raw sienna. And again, choosing a yellow. I had raw umber, raw sienna, I had the cadmiums. 
just to see which one worked. And this one was the colour that kind of worked for the whole painting. Just dropping a touch of yellow in, and it's not a colour you think would you would see, but it just the clouds kind of reflect other colours around them, and it's not going to be too strong because again you've got to remember with the watercolour it dries at half the strength. In with the permanent rose, and I'm looking for a purple. Now, putting it into the tropical blue, but I'm adding some of the darker ultramarine. It just is going to give me the colour I'm looking for. I don't, again, don't want it too strong. So, plenty of water. I can always strengthen things. It's harder to take things back than it is to strengthen. So using the texture of the paper, see how I can just use and dabble the brush around and it just catches the edge of the paper. So to be honest, it was the first paper I picked up, but actually I then thought, well, that's actually going to be really nice to be able to get the texture in the clouds. Changing the way I hold my brush, just so you catch a little bit more. This cloud is a bit too odd, but even just putting that little bit of shadow, which is under the cloud, has altered it. So the shadow is underneath on this occasion because the sun is directly above. Just try not to make it too strong. Just catching. And you can see how that yellow actually doesn't look odd. It's not out of place. If I was going to make it easy for myself, I'd put no clouds in at all. And you can do that. If clouds are a problem, practice your clouds until you're happy with them. And then, or either just leave them out of a painting. It's no, you don't have to put everything in you see. Anita? Yes. Uh, people are loving the brushes. I've got some questions for you. Yes. Uh, well, one question in particular. Um, to know whether the brushes would be good with the Derwent ink pens blocks? They should do. So they're a synthetic brush. They've just been specially made to imitate a sable. So yeah, they will work with any wet medium, to be honest. Um, and the ink blocks are that really strong, um, intense colour which dries um, waterproof once it's dry and you can pick it up. So yeah, absolutely. I can't see any reason why you can't use them with anything, including acrylics. And I do often use the same brush for both an acrylic and a watercolour. Just any brush will work for any medium as, as long as it works for you. Probably gone a little too heavy here. So let's see what I, how I can, much I can lift off. Chances are not a huge amount, but a great tool is having your tissue in your hand, which is really good for clouds. Because I don't think I can take this back anymore because I've put the tropical blue on, but I can soften, I can slightly alter. And sometimes you only need a slight bit of alteration. Oh, right, stop because I'm just going to keep working into it. Because I'm not overly fond of doing a landscape, I tend to keep fiddling and keep working when I don't need to. So I'm talking to myself in my head. Stop, move on. Right, into the mountains in the background, and I'm just going to drop colour in. It doesn't matter what colour, totally. I don't want them too blue, because I don't want them to look like the clouds. So I'm going to just pick up a little bit of colours. And again, quite light because I can always 
go back in and darken. It's so much harder to lift off, as you can see from the clouds, than it is to take it back off. It might be a bit too pink, but it doesn't. The, what I want to do, because I want to add some highlights and make sure the elephant has some light on it, I want to make sure that everything goes up to the elephant so I'm able to leave areas of white around the elephant. You'll see as I do it what I mean. Now because I've used put paint on here it's wet so I'm able just to wet the page. Now you'll see that it's actually drying quite quickly, which is, means I'm not getting a lot of bleed back into it. Part of the reason is it's Bockingford, and that I like Bockingford um, because it dries quite quickly. Other papers will stay wetter for longer and give you the chance to keep moving and bleeding into bit of green. I know with aerial perspective you get the lighter uh, mountains are a purple but I think on this occasion he's not that far from the distance and I'm just seeing so many more colours than just the purple and I don't want them to be too close to the Colour to the as the sky. Anita, I'm, yes. Sorry, I'm, in, I'm interrupting it. This question from me actually. Do you want to talk about the nice wide screen format that you've chosen and the yeah. fact that you've moved your elephant around a bit? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I might have spoken to Gary about this. So, yeah. In the original, the elephant is actually very centred because it was taken from a photograph, um, and people like to focus on the subject. So this is a great way that as an artist you can alter what you're seeing. So I just love the idea of the elephant in this huge, vast area. So what I've done is I've moved him to the side and actually made a landscape shape to just so it kind of makes it more dramatic. And this is what, when you're painting, you don't have to be a slave to the original. I know I've said this many times, but people don't see, the, unless it's a portrait. And again, you can manipulate, as long as you've got good key features and it looks like the person, you can then, you're the artist and really go to town. So again, and people haven't seen the original image. So I've got the luxury of being able to move um, and alter things. Right, I'm going to move. I'm just going to fix something. And it's very tiny, but for me, the, it wasn't a good shape just there. So it's just a really tiny thing. I probably should have started working that way. And what I'm going to leave that area now because I will just keep working into it when I don't need to and I can come back to it. So just because you've left an area doesn't mean you have to stop working in it. You can come back. Okay. That was a surprise cooler, but I actually like it. And I'm, I'm, I don't get over worried about what colours I'm putting in um, because I think that's just part of the painting, that's part of the fun and the unpredictability. If I was, what I would have done is practice and practice and practice and really give myself a formula to work from. But I think until you get to that stage, why not just see what happens? And often, even with this, before it dried, I was going, don't like it. It doesn't look good. It's not working. 
and then it dried and I'd walked away, come back the next day and went, oh, that's really quite different because it dries so very different. So what I'm going to do is try and get as a good section done. We'll take a short break, probably won't be long enough, and then I come back and then I can add and manipulate and look at areas that I might need to work on. Don't try and do it all at one go because that's when you, you lose yourself. And I can say, I do this often, but even I will lose myself and lose what I'm trying to do. Just walk away, have a cup of tea. Painting doesn't have to be done in one full session. See. Let's see what's working here. Do I need? Maybe put some pink on there. Let the colours dry and then I can see what needs to be done. Okay. So, what colour do I need, want to do next? I'm going to do the yellow ochre. Now, I know I used blue on this colour, so I actually might. Because I use the phthalo blue, it's a very staining colour. And as much as I will clean my brush, the chances are it's going to pick up some of the blue. Which So really, I need a really good clean of that brush. Like I say, to, if, I'd done, if I'd put it on and it was slightly blue, it, it wouldn't have mattered. But what I want is this lovely yellow. I want it pure yellow. So let's just whack it on. And this is where you'll see why I chose the rough paper. Look at how it misses the some of the pockets and you get that lovely rough. So you've got smooth here, but I can really use the texture of the paper. Just pick up. Again, I am thinking about aerial perspective, so it will be light in the background coming forward. And I'm also being careful not to put too much paint on because I don't want to lose some of the texture. And I've gone into the elephant. I won't do that now, I'll do that in a minute. Gone into the elephant because I want it as a whole. And actually elephants, though they can look grey, they also can take up the colour of the environment because they roll in the mud. Um, as a sun screen. So they will often have the colour of the earth and so painting it all together. So this is a quinacridone and I want to get it to granulate. So I'm not mixing it too much because you can mix it and get a much more smooth formula but if I don't mix it I will have that really grainy feel to it. That's it. A little bit dry brush. And you'll notice I'm also just changing the direction I'm um, concentrating on is having a straight horizon, but if you just change the direction of your brush, it will just add a little bit more drama to your painting. So this is just layers. I quite like, I was trying to get this very lightness in the background previously, and I like it at the moment, so I'm going to leave it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop because I know I'm just going to keep working, let it dry, and then I can work on the elephant and then see which areas maybe need a little bit more definition. I think the, um, here does because it's the same tonal value as the sky, but I want to let it dry and then think about it. So join me in a minute when we can continue to add more detail.
Get ready for an exclusive day of arty treats, inspiring demonstrations and a poppy challenge exhibition to remember. Visit SAA HQ and enjoy a fabulous day packed with a hands-on painting workshop run by a special guest artist. Take a seat in the TV studio audience as SAA artist Anita Pounder performs her latest demonstration and admire your Poppy Challenge entry alongside thousands of others in the inspiring and humbling Painter Poppy exhibition. You'll get to try out new products, meet fellow SAA members and take a tour of head office, say hello to the staff you speak to on the phones and see a practical demonstration of our new in-house picture framing facility. Plus, you'll have the chance to bag a bargain in our on-site shop and each guest will receive an exclusive gift to commemorate the day. Tickets are only £15 each, with 10% donated to the Royal British Legion, but spaces are limited to just 100 visitors per day. So hurry and book your place today. Come and join us for a truly inspirational day. Hello and welcome back. So had a chance not to continue painting, literally stop. Um, and I know I always say it, but it really is a useful exercise. It just helps when you come back to something. So I'm going to work on the elephant, and but I can see on a whole lots of areas I'd like to work on. But let's get on with the elephant. So creating a nice wet layer of colour using the raw sienna as a base layer. It's a colour used in the landscape and it will work really nicely to give me that light quality I'm looking for. But it also gives me a wet base where I can then add other colours and they just mix and merge on the page. So one yellow elephant. So now in with the burnt sienna, which is probably one of my go-to colours. I'm just going to drop it in and let it merge. And I'm not worried too much if the colour bleeds into the background. Well, I'm trying to do is not cover the whole of the yellow. I'm using the yellow as an initial colour to mix. Okay, so I'm also looking at lights and darks in the ear. This is the darkest area, but it's got some lovely light across the head here. Cover the eye because I can come back into that. Now the light is hitting from here so I need to just darken off this side. All of these things I'm talking about, I'm thinking in my head. For me, I don't normally work this delicately. I'm usually a little bit more of a splash it on and see. So again, it's a nice exercise for me just to try something different and go a little bit outside my own comfort zone. Because I normally don't put a background in. I like to concentrate on the subject. I don't like the harsh edges. Now I know with this colour I can move and I can take back. But while that's still wet I'm going to go in with the ultramarine. So this is why I chose another blue because it works wonderfully with the burnt sienna. So if I'm ever looking for a grey or a darker colour or a shadow my go-to will be the French ultramarine and the burnt sienna because you can make red greys, blue greys, really quite dark. 
colours. So there you go, so that's a bit browner. Again, I'm looking at shadow, but I'm not looking at detail too much at the moment. I'm probably also being quite a bit softer than I normally would be. Usually would have whacked on the colour a little bit more. But I'm trying something a little different just to see what happens. Yeah. A bit too strong. Let's just soften that. It's all to do with balance of colour and water with watercolour. But I know I'm going to put that on and wet it again and then drop in. ultramarine and you can see what colours it makes so having the colours mix on the page is really fun okay look at the different colours just there take it over I want a little bit more brown My head's a little too sharp this is where I know I'm at risk of overworking, so put in shadow there, and the tusks, so elephants, what facts about elephants, like I say, they're on the vulnerable list, so they're not quite endangered yet, they have no natural predators other than man, which is, you know, poaching and environment, all are destroying these wonderful animals which actually are vital for the environment they live in, as are any other, missing something there, as are any other animal. So, oh, sorry, I need to, um, Aisha who's in uh, South Africa described them as they, they're amazing. I haven't had the luxury of actually seeing them in the wild, which I hope to do at some time in my life. But yeah, I mean, they are monstrously amazing animals. That Their trunks, they are really sensitive. They're not only used for feeding, they're used for touch and they can swim really well so they can actually use them as a snorkel it's just these what look like really lumbering animals have so many delicate rituals they're usually matriarchal groups with the female being the um the biggest in the group is usually the matriarch live to about 70 years so have a good lifespan ha do i know you hear that they have a really good memory but actually apparently they do they have a fabulous memory and what they can also do is they can because they migrate and they move around they can also remember where areas weren't safe for them and change apparently baby elephants aren't born with that natural instinct so they have to learn from the group all the skills and the survival skills that they will get Come on, it's working I like it when it works okay so under the belly here so this is darker Because both of these colours are transparent, you do have to find that they tend to sink into each other a little bit. But because I'm trying to be a little bit more delicate with my handling, I don't want to over colour. And 
it dries very differently anyway. Just soften. Right. Going to leave that for a second, let it dry because then I can come in and put detail in. And this is where I'm glad I've left this the background a little bit because now I can start to just add a little bit more tone. I think it was a bit too soft, a bit too gentle. Don't want to overcolour. I don't think it did it any justice. Again, I'm not overly worried about what colour I'm picking up. I'm going to look at valleys here because it creates a shadow. And this is why I've been really conscious to make sure that I've kept it quite light because you can go back in. If I over coloured it in the first place it makes it much more difficult to go back in. So that's wet now. Just using the brush to add little bits of detail. And again it doesn't need to be too much use the edge of the brush to catch and pick up the grain. Right. Just looking at some different shapes. Just see, just tiny touches. I'm really being very careful and conscientious not to work too hard. But that has made a difference. Look at the difference. Just that slight bit of value has just made that work much better. I'm not looking at every single detail. Just picking up some values. So here I can see it dips into a darker area. And if I'd done that straight away all in one go, I would have overworked. I wouldn't have been able to stop and say, no, it doesn't need any more. Just catching paper, using the paper. Again, I'm also trying to make sense, trying to think, does that make sense? Does it look like the hills or... Right, I need... Trying to balance both sides. I don't want to overwork this. I think I've got quite a nice balance, but I do feel I need a little bit of strength in some of these areas. I don't want to do too much and I'm leaving it. I like the way that background worked. So let's see what I can do. I'm doing this too wet. There we go, look at that. Purpose picked up this um, flat brush because I don't want that flat. That's what I was looking for. See how it's picking up the texture? Just using that little bit of the t rough paper. Picking some of the burnt sienna. Because it's foreground, I want to make sure I've got detail because I want it to... This is what you see. You will see maybe a few grasses, but I don't want to paint every single one. It's not something I'm 
interested in, to be honest, as a whole. Oops, that didn't work. Let's brush it out. Take, make sure I've got some of the same colour going in. I've looked at the texture of the ground and it has these lovely colours in, which again, it's been something I've thought about as I've been doing it, but looking again, darks and lights without. So in this grass, you can't actually see the elephant's feet. But what I want to do is make sure that it doesn't look like the elephant isn't part of the landscape. like that kind of angle going on here and it will look again different when I take the edge off so it's quite barren at the moment I don't know if you can see I can see that it's very flat here that's better even Let's take a little bit of colour into the elephant. And what I'm really struggling with is trying to keep some light and making it look like everything is part of a whole without using that colour I've put on. And there was very white, but it was a strip of white across the page. Right, stop with that and let's see if I can bring out some of the details on the elephant because that is the bit that will suddenly make it all ping forward. So you'll see I'm thinking constantly of different stages. There's pieces of, oh, I don't like it, but what I'm going to do is leave it. Areas that you don't like, don't try and fix straight away. Come back to them. Right, let's get a little bit of a darker colour. So that fabulous burnt sienna and the ultramarine to make that dark and now I can start just and this is where you have to be a little bit careful because I don't want to add too much I don't want to destroy the colours I've got underneath but I do need to darken and think about much darker areas and maybe reshape here because I think I've lost that shape in the here looking at the original got the eye here but you've got shadow over the eye and so using quite a lot more pigment than water this is where I can strengthen but try not to do it too much. This is where you can really overwork. Which is why you leave it till maybe another day. A lot of dabbing off. So if I feel I've put the colour on too strongly, I will just dab it off. Use the colour I've got. Don't know if that's going to work, if I can come back to it. Let me just strengthen the tusk so that you can see the tusk underneath there. Right. That's worked quite well. Need a little bit more detail going into here. I know you can't see it fully, but as a painting, I think little details like this just make it a little bit more powerful. On the photograph, it's quite flat. Um, so this is what I'm aiming to just take some of that flatness away. I can't see all the tonal values. So I'm having to really push and bring these out. Okay, this is the foot. moment that's just lost 
So let's bring it out. They have a little shape. Let's reshape. I think you can just see the edge of the toes there. Right, this needs reshaping. It's lost its shape. So just looking at the original just to bring it back. I know what I need to do. This is quite cute. He's got his tail here and it comes just through there. So it's Again, still using the texture of the paper. The paper hasn't disappeared. And this detail on his back here, it has a ridge. And it's just putting th little things like that back on. I don't like that bit there. I don't like this color very much. Well, it, the struggle is, is trying to show the light, but also show the solid nature of the animal. Right, that's doing too much. I'm stopping now because I know it will dry very differently. So let's put Yelly in the landscape and ground it. Put the last thing in, which will be... That's quite nice. I quite like that picking up some of the blue. Is shadow. Because it's quite strong colours, I need to put a shadow under the elephant. So Goes on just here. Make sure it's strong enough. Water helps it move a little bit. It's a bit strong, but I can take that back down. Shadow also touches it. You have to remember it touches the foot, it comes from now. The shadow isn't too prominent on this, it's all under the body, right? Including under the trunk here. Now, the trunk I have constantly been thinking don't make the trunk too long because it's not longer than the feet. Stand back. Okay. I just need a little bit more definition in the foreground, and I'm probably doing too much. Doing some splattering. I, I am going to do some, some splattering. I am splattering is my next point of call because I just love it. It just. So, let me see if I can. I don't mind getting a little bit on the elephant, but I want to control splattering. Okay, just picking up whatever colour I've got on here. Don't, I don't know how to control splattering as much. Oh, there you go. Oh. Try tapping it on another brush. Yeah. That that's, that's, that's complicated. <laughs> Let's try it. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Gary. Let's get a little bit into the elephant. I don't... Okay. Oh, look at that. That's nice. Don't get carried away. I know, but I'm just trying to... 
I do. Right, stop. So I don't know if I can do this now, but I'm going to. I'm going to take away the edge because putting a frame around something or um, um, taking off the masking tape and creating a frame really makes everything fall together. And a painting that you really may have written off, if you put a mat around it, it suddenly focuses things, which I think is great. So gently taking it off at an angle. Because sometimes the paper rips, sometimes it doesn't. And I shouldn't really be doing this now because it's still a bit too wet. But I think if I'm careful, we'll be all right. And by doing it at this angle and slowly, any tears in the paper will tear away and not into the painting. And it's always, if you want it to be put in a mount anyway, you can often cover up and that kind of thing. And I can't tell you which paper tears more than any other. It's still wet that side, so that might not work. It totally depends. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. See, that's tearing and taking this off at the bottom there. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. It's taken that off, but it's under any mount that I will have. Chances are I'm pulling it too fast. It's peeling off nicely. I love a nice clean edge. It's just that's kind of the most exciting little thing. That clean edge. And I don't know if you can see, but can you? I need to do things. I can still see little areas I want to work on, but I'm not going to. Still picking up the paper. I think Oh, yeah, 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 because we've not taped it on, I've used it. Oh, Gary's worried about it falling off the... <laughs> yeah, the camera angles. Oh, look, look, how sharp that is. Just really sad, but quite exciting. There you go. And like I say, I can see loads of areas I just want to work into and fix. And that foot is not quite there. It needs something. But this is what you do. You walk away from something, you come back. And then sometimes it's just a little touch here and there to fix things. So um, Elephant, really inspired by the fabulous photograph in the first place. Um, and it's fallen nicely into place with the... WWF World Hour Day on the 30th of March at 8.30 where big organisations are going to turn off their lights for an hour to represent what we can do for our planet. So I hope you enjoyed that and join us next week for some even more exciting um, news. We will be doing something slightly different. Um, doing a demo same as this but we'll have a live studio audience so don't know how that's going to work that's a first for me last minute so uh, join us for it's going to be split into a couple of sessions so I'll do a first session and then we'll have a different group of people in because we're having open days at headquarters um, so something a little bit different and set into two parts, so I hope you join us then. Get ready for an exclusive day of arty treats, inspiring demonstrations and a poppy challenge exhibition to remember. Visit SAAHQ and enjoy a fabulous day packed with a hands-on painting workshop run by a special guest artist. 
Take a seat in the TV studio audience as SAA artist Anita Pounder performs her latest demonstration and admire your Poppy Challenge entry alongside thousands of others in the inspiring and humbling Painter Poppy exhibition. You'll get to try out new products, meet fellow SAA members and take a tour of head office, say hello to the staff you speak to on the phones and see a practical demonstration of our new in-house picture framing facility. Plus, you'll have the chance to bag a bargain in our on-site shop and each guest will receive an exclusive gift to commemorate the day. Tickets are only £15 each, with 10% donated to the Royal British Legion, but spaces are limited to just 100 visitors per day. So hurry and book your place today. Come and join us for a truly inspirational day.